I coached three champ players live on stream to figure out what was holding them back. And what I found was a lot of the same problems. So here are the best tips from those sessions that you can go apply to your games if you're hard stuck and want to rank up fast. If you're new here, I'm known as a top 0.1% coach and for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in taking gold through champ ranked players up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. Since we signed Apparently Jack as head coach, we just had our biggest launch in over a dozen seasons. And at the time this video drops, we decided to open enrollment early for our 14th launch to catch up and make sure we don't have overflow like last season. So if you're looking for that GC or even SSL title, we just restocked 100 seats for this next launch. DM me on Discord with the keyword early and we can make sure to hold a spot for you. I'll have my Discord first link down below. Otherwise, let's get into the games. One thing I want to highlight um, is you do an excellent job here naturally of assessing the play and realizing what. What do you what do you make the decision to do here? This is just something I want to point out that I think a lot of people don't realize is a very good decision. You so I'm low on boost, so my first thing would be to go uh, probably back post. Yes. Maybe get the boost if I can grab a couple pads exactly i really like how you how you uh, realize that the ball's going slow in your corner you already have a teammate who's kind of second here and mm -hmm. you make the decision to go all the way across a lot of lower ranked players would just continue to creep towards this ball and it would put you in a lot of awkward situations so great job rotating across i love everything about this play except for one tiny thing and it's it's this flip right here any idea why I might not like that flip right in that moment? Because it leaves me... Well, I guess I'm committed to that flip, right? So if anything were to happen, I wouldn't be able to go for that. Right, exactly. I think the biggest thing that this flip misses out on, man, is right here. Whenever you're switching sides, you almost always want to think, is there somebody in the midfield? Is there somebody in my path? Because while you're switching sides on the field, you know, moving from ball side to off the ball or, or trying to cut across for whatever reason to get boost, there's almost always going to be somebody lurking midfield. And you have the right idea of, I need to get back post. But because you flip, you actually miss out on an opportunity that I think you could have demoed that guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you demo that guy, guess who scores this goal? <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> Something I want you to notice here is what happens when, as as this play is moving up the field, it's very clear all, all of blue team is attacking. This is a great play to analyze because I, I think the movement is very clear. We see all of blue team attacking. And let me ask you, what is happening with your two te teammates here? It looks like they're both rotating back. Yes, exactly. Not only are they both rotating back, something I want to highlight here, what are they both doing specifically? They're flipping. They're committed. Exactly. Whenever you see people flip, it's very obvious car language, right? So what that flip should signal you to do, let's say you have two options, right? When you see a teammate flip back, do you push up or push back with them? generally speaking if i feel they can get behind me by the time i get up to hit the ball then i'll you know then i'll go for it but if they're too far away i'm just gonna stay back and give them buy them a little more time yeah I, I i totally agree it's absolutely situational and you're right most times when i see two teammates flipping back like this and i see the this many players on blue team attacking i'm concerned about this space in the midfield and I'm pushing up pretty aggressively. When you leave three players on the attack with this much space and you're playing back, what kind of happens, it's not necessarily bad for you, but it just creates awkwardness with your team here. You see this? Where everybody's rotating the exact same way and you're all covering the same. <laughs> this is actually, an, this is truly incredible. These, <laughs> with how these rotations are playing. You got three people stacked in a straight line on blue team and three people stacked in a straight line on orange team. This is one of those situations where, yes, I understand you want to play safe, but honestly, it would be easier for your team if you just push up here. So this is, yeah, so this is a situation where it's hard to say, but I feel like this half flip right here is generally, generally not good. What's the problem with this half flip here? It looks like... I went from facing the plate to facing away from it. Yeah, I was I would say that's the biggest thing, man. I think your your one of your biggest strengths is that you're always covering the safe option, which is great. But realistically, you have to think 
in this situation, if you're positioned, let's say not even here, let's say you're positioned right here. This is your car, right? If the ball is hit over your head, are you going to have time to save it? Yeah. Ho hopefully, right? Now, let me ask you another question. If the ball comes to midfield here, are you going to be able to score it from back here? Maybe I can get a shot on target or maybe hit the backboard. Potentially, right? The idea that uh, that I, I'm trying to get at there is right now you're covering the worst case scenario, but you're giving up any opportunity for a, a ball that comes into this zone, right? That you could potentially put a shot on that. Because by the time the ball does come to anywhere here, if it did, you're going to be racing to it with just the same speed as they are. Potentially, you know, potentially it'll take you longer, right? Mm -hmm. I think being positioned too far back here, it's limiting you, man. It, it, it's limiting your offense a lot. Well, cool. Hopefully that replay was helpful. I think that was a great example. Like I said, dude, top takeaways. Definitely don't feel bad about shutting down space and playing more aggressive, especially if you know your teammates are behind you. You want to cover them, but at some point you do have to go for the ball when, you know, the situation's good enough. And if your teammates scuff it, they scuff it. Solid work on principles. It's just about layering in, ha having a little bit more impact while you're on the ball going for it when you can beat them, having the confidence, because a lot of this game was you kind of playing back and you just taking 50s, and that's fine, but uh, it's not going to create goals for your team. Good stuff, but I hope that was helpful, Vic. Thanks, man. Yeah, you got it. Here, I like you waiting back. Uh, yeah, I, this, uh, this is hard. Once you see him get this touch right here, th this final touch is the touch that kind of signals that you have to go. Ideally, if anything, I want you flying up right here. When this guy doesn't get the best setup, the best time to shut down an air dribble is before it happens. So if you can get up here and just get in his way, you could probably shut down this guy's angle, even though you're a little bit later to the ball than him. I don't mind this touch up the wall, and let's see what you do here. This isn't a bad shot, but why might I not like it? It would be probably better to, to have a soft first touch and then uh, go for it. Exactly. 100%, dude. Yeah. Yeah, some, something that I'm noticing, you're kind of hoping that these people are, you're giving them a lot of space, hoping that they're not going to uh, put a shot, a good shot on net, right? <laughs> like this guy, yeah. this guy's challenging here. You know, you have a teammate behind you in almost every situation here at my ranks. I'm just jumping and trying to force him to the backboard, right? Just making sure he has no, no clear shot on net. I'm yeah. noticing you're staying down, which is making it so that, you know, if he does put a good shot on net, you know, if he puts anything here, you could probably save it but it's going to be a double commit, right? Yeah. It's better to just go up for your teammate and make it clear that you're trying to shut them down and then you get two chances at saving it rather than one. I don't mind you going for a shot here, but what are the other options? I mean, yes, you can go for a shot. That's one. I can just uh, catch the ball and uh, bring it, you know, yep. a better, better uh, angle, better shot opportunity. Exactly. You're very much like the last player, which I like, uh, which I like a lot. Very much like Vic, in that you're you're playing very safe, right, and very patient. But if we actually look at this play, what does this guy have on you, right? Like, look at where you're turning versus look at what he has. Like this ball is super slow on the bottom of the wall and your teammate is about to force him to hit it away, right? So by spacing this far from the guy, you're giving them, and if I, if I, maybe if I show you from the side, it'll make, it'll, it'll help too. You're giving yeah, him the yeah. chance to 1v1 you one at a time, right? So he beats your teammate, and now they have another chance to keep going, and honestly, what is this guy doing? I have no clue what he's doing. I, I don't know why <laughs> they're making these touches. Whereas if you're a little closer here, like he he beats your teammate here, and then you can help out and swoop in. You don't. I'm not saying you have to be on top of him, but you're you're positioning quite far from the play, and it's just making you super awkward because you're now you're backing up, and then you're driving forward, and you don't know where to go. Right? It's just a mess. Yeah. Yeah, you're positioning very very far. Like in like in this position, man. This ball is so slow. They're not gonna get a booming clear anytime soon. And if they do, you just turn back and you drive back. You shadow. Yeah. Luckily, I think your teammate might get a goal. But you, you see, you see how this is stabbing you in the foot right there, right? Like if you're, yeah. when this, this ball is so slow, they're not going to boom it over your head. So just get closer, you know? And then maybe when this ball comes center, you're ready. Like in this situation here, this ball's over your head, right? They're taking up the field. Simply hit the brakes here. Like if he's going to hit it up the wall and try to go for a passing play, just hit the brakes. That way you're ready to turn and you're kind of just shadowing them, trying to force it into your corner because you know your teammates way back right now. So it, it it doesn't help you to go back all the way and meet your teammate over there. Cover the play. He'll know he'll see that you're shadowing the play and he'll respect you. Going all the way back here, it lets them move closer to your net for no cost. Once again, like 
I love I love this demo. Once you get that demo, turn on ball cam and check your maybe you could turn, right? But you're immediately getting the demo and then you're flipping back for half boost. And then you're checking and then you're like, okay, now I'm coming back to the play. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I hope that was helpful, man. The minute I do get a beat, I will say, like, just in general as a principle, when you do get the ball by one, I know your idea here is, ah, I want to get around it. I want to play it to the center, which is, you know, generally what you want to do. However, in this situation, because you have one opponent already out of the play, generally it's better to just go super aggro and just get the ball towards their net as quick as possible in whatever way you can. If you have to slow down to get these cuts, as you can see, it, it, it gives time for this guy to come back. And now they're able to defend with two as opposed to defending with one. So you get that beat flip into this push it around try to get it center look for demos just play forward 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 try not to slow play and, and try to control the ball after you get that first beat be careful about committing on centers like like if you can make this same center like while potentially jumping up under the ball and hitting it high and then trying to recover onto the backboard it might be better than front flipping forward i get the idea you just kind of want to bang it hard to the center but once again like the minute you put the ball to the center that hard it's a foot race between you and your teammate and this is all based on whether or not your teammate beats them there